Well, I'm back to work on the mill again. Decided that I'm going to pull the mill outside so that I can use my loader and try and uh, take the knee off. I think I might be able to take the knee off now with the saddle still attached and then flip the whole thing over and maybe that'll uh, give me better access to the uh, to the underside gears and everything in there. I also want to uh, get this motor and bracket and all that off the top and that's going to be easy to lift off with the loader as opposed to in here. Uh, actually I do see there's a bar up there. I know that he's had a chain fall on that in the past so I could use the chain fall on that bar up there but for now I think I'm just gonna maybe just pull it out. So I've been moving some stuff out of here and getting some small parts together so I don't misplace them. These are the two shoes that fell out when I took this assembly off the side here. You can clearly see where where they go. One runs on there, inside there, and one runs on inside here. Question is which is which? Well, it looks like they're identical. Same size. So I don't know which shoe is which, so I'm not gonna worry about it. That's kind of interesting. I just noticed that the way this works is of course the power, the feed power comes out of this gearbox here and then it's input into this reversing unit right here through here, through this shaft and then it's output on this gear right here which meshes with this large gear you can see inside here and that transfers power to inside the knee. Um, but what is perplexing to me is this gear right here does this. I don't know if that's by design or if there's something worn out in there. There's supposed to be some sort of bearing or something that's in there that's worn out, I wonder. Of course, the million dollar question would be if there is a bearing in there, how do you how do you change it? Because the way this is made, it's clear that the gear would need to come out this way. But this is a solid cast end, I think, by the looks of it. So, huh? I don't know. Oh no, I spoke too soon. It looks like this does. Looks like there is a line right there. So this. This end cap looks like there's a way that that can be removed from this main housing right here. And then that, of course, would let you slide that right out and replace a bushing or bearing in there. Well, just today I got a request for the tool tray, which I'm not surprised because I can imagine a lot of these were snapped off or broken off accidentally or just removed for the purpose of... Uh, getting in and out of a building or whatever and lost. So uh, I think that's a nice handy thing that somebody would like to have on their machine. So that's easy enough. Two screws to remove that. Well, I got the tool tray off. Now I just uh, popped off all the belts off of this pulley. Interesting how this was mounted up here. There's no facility for uh, adjusting it for tension that I can see. Uh, he just kind of got it close, I guess, and then I don't know if he shaved down these blocks of wood to be the perfect size, but as the belt stretched, there wasn't really any way to tighten it. Maybe moving it back and forth this way or this way a little bit, that's about it. And I just popped the belts off and noticed that, wow, there's, I can't see any way to get these belts off or on without... I mean, it sure looks like, because, I mean, this this shaft looks like it goes right inside here. So it looks to me like uh, he probably had to take this arm off, this big arm, just to get the belts on. That was probably a chore. Actually, taking that arm off is not that bad. You just take these four screws out, and then, of course, you need a little bit of you need to make sure you ate your Wheaties so you can uh, support this while you're unscrewing it. Alright, I got that thing off. What's nice is that that 
part right there kind of hangs on this bearing on the back here so you can just get the screws out and it'll be partially supported by the back there and then you give it a quick jerk and this bearing will come out of this uh, this part right here and now that I look at it it looks like maybe loosening this bolt was what I should have done but that bearing didn't take much to get that it's the slight pull and that came right out so if that's an oiler this tube right here bet you that's what that is it's probably a way to oil it oil that bearing yeah I bet you right here there you go on the top there that's probably a you drip oil in there and then uh, it runs down that little tube right there and drips right down in this bearing that's kind of neat oh I see that's not to loosen this to get the bearing off that's to loosen this so that this whole flange part right here comes off of this part right here which stays behind with this it's part of that casting might as well get the draw bar out while I'm here the draw bar goes through this hole in the back and then what happens is when you put an, uh, an arbor, tapered arbor in this hole, there'll be a threaded um, hole on the back of that arbor and it sticks in there. And you thread this into it and as you tighten this up it draws that taper into there tighter. And that's the uh, reason why they call it a draw bar even though it's really just a really long bolt. But I've got a request on that too. So that's going to go in the selling parts pile. Hmm. Problems again. Well, my idea of just lifting this knee straight up and off, that's not going to work because this is going to hit the spindle here. This I can get out. That's easy enough to move out of there. I just slide that right on out, take it out altogether if I wanted to. This, on the other hand, is the main spindle, and the way that's in there I'm not sure about. So... That could be a much bigger issue to try and get that out. I don't know if this outer ring comes off. And this right here with the two holes in it, that's, I don't know if that's, uh, I'm not sure what the deal is with that, how that all comes apart. And there's no clues when you open this up and look in here because all you see is a lot of gears on that shaft which unless this is a separate piece then I don't know I, get a light over, I guess I should get a light over here and look at the back of this thing oh, I don't know it doesn't look promising nothing to explain to me I see a couple of set screws looks like maybe in there I don't know I don't know and I just don't know if it's going to be worth the effort. I uh, have not received one request for any gears or the spindle or any parts inside this main unit here. Or any parts of the clutch. Um, so I'm beginning to wonder if I might just bail on this whole midsection here and let it all go to the scrapyard in one piece. I will grab this little cover though. I'm sure somebody might be missing that cover on theirs and might want it. Oh well, I did take a knife and shave off some of the crud that's on this shaft right here. And uh, I found out by doing that I was able to unscrew this far enough so that this actually completely unscrewed from here. So I think if I clean up all along this shaft, I can actually tap this shaft that the handle is on for the knee lock completely out and I've got a buyer for that well getting there slowly but surely I've got to uh, get this out a little bit further and then uh, rotate it so that the pins facing up drive this pin out that held that stop on that I snapped off by accident and then uh, I should be able to take this completely out well that wasn't easy getting that to come out the very end of this is a little flared probably from when I was banging on it without drift before so when I got down to this part I should have gotten a grinder and 
ground off the edge of that. But instead I decided to try and force it through and that led to me having to beat the snot out of it to get it out. So hopefully the threads are gonna be okay and I just need to grind the outside of that. So of course the way to try that would be to see if I can get that stud out over here that threads into it and see if it wants to thread into it now or if not then I'll uh, not force it and I'll wait until I get a chance to run a tap through it. Oh, camera battery's dying. I'm sweating, so I think I'll quit for today. Well, if I have enough battery power, I'll just run by real quick what I just found out, which is that uh, these screws in, that are in the front of the knee here, uh, they screw into the jib behind it. They actually thread into the jib, because I was able, I was lucky enough to be able to get two of them out. I could see the threads on the end. So there was no way I was going to bang on these thread ends and knock those screws out like I thought. They threaded in there, so I've got to get them all out. I've got one out on the bottom. I was lucky enough to get the one on the top, even though my uh, saddle's still kind of in the way. I could have moved it out and got a little more room, but this one I think does knock out. It's just a pin, but this screw is giving me trouble, so I'm going to have to come back with my impact driver and see if I can uh, knock that screw out, uh, loosen it up. 